The Sierra trial, it's a novel treatment with stem cell transplant for patients with leukemia involving an agent that's a, a new form of radiation treatment. The IMAB is the what's referred to as a radioimmunoconjugate, so it's the radiation coupled to an antibody that delivers the radiation to the leukemic cells in the bone marrow. Uh, the reason why this treatment was developed was not all patients who have leukemia will go into remission with standard treatments, and that's required to proceed to a transplant. So this was a novel new way to treat leukemia more effectively. Our experience here has been quite positive. Patients who ordinarily would probably not be able to have transplant, and the patients who have received the IOMAB treatment, it's worked very well to get patients into remission. So it's very exciting treatment. It's patient specific and it's individualized. So it incorporates a lot of components that involve imaging the patient to first actually understand how the body is handling the radio immunotargeted agent and how it's clearing. And that information is used to calculate the radiation doses so that we ensure that these doses are going to be safe to the patient and yet we are able to maximize how much therapy we are able to give. It has a huge potential to change the paradigm of the current treatment that involves high dose uh, myelotoxic chemotherapy or cytotoxic chemotherapy and radiation. I think the special thing about the Sierra trial is it opens uh, the opportunity for transplant to patients who otherwise have terminal leukemia and would not be offered a transplantation in most settings. It's for older patients. It's already evident that the treatment works very well uh, to replace other conditioning regimens we would have relied on in the past. So all the patients in graft and with what appears to be less toxicity pound for pound for the amount of radiation we're giving them. In fact, uh, the upcoming report shows that the rates of sepsis and mucositis seem to be lower uh, and those are significant complications of transplant. So our experience is that the drug works very well to get people into remission right away. We don't have the final efficacy results of the Sierra trial, but so far, the patients who were randomized to the control arm or the conventional treatment, some of them who did not end up getting transplant were crossed over to IMAP, and even those patients were able to receive uh, the transplant because they had engraftment. So there was 100% engraftment rate with IOMAP B as against the standard of care myeloablative treatment. So as far as the IOMAP B and the Sierra trial is concerned, uh, this is just one aspect of using this novel radioimmunotherapy. I think it has the potential to, for application in other areas. It can be used for therapies such as the cellular therapies and gene therapies. In fact, one of these uh, trials is also occurring at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center where we are giving it ahead with CAR D cell therapy. The trials uh, have been conducted at many centers in the U.S. who are, are doing it now and have gotten very used to, to using the agent. Uh, it does require collaboration with uh, nuclear medicine departments and nuclear medicine physicians with the expertise to handle a radioimmunoconjugate that has a significant dose of radiation. So any academic center or large hospital with a good nuclear medicine department should be pretty familiar with this type of work and be able to set up a program like this without too much difficulty. Everyone is eagerly awaiting the, the final results of this study. Uh, I, th I think if it proves to be as effective as we're hoping, uh, the transplant community will start uh, using the agent more frequently. And I think in, in the field of, you know, Theranostic, this is definitely a critical step. And I think as a treatment, it is geared towards an unmet need that exists currently for patients of AML. It is definitely groundbreaking because this is one of the few treatments where we have been able to integrate dosimetry and actually show that even such high doses of radiation can be administered to patient by doing patient-specific calculations and giving these radiation doses within the prescribed limits. So I think it is exemplary in that way that it is uh, setting an example which can be further applied and can be practically applied to clinical care. 
everyone has optimism and enthusiasm that this likely will prove to be a confirmed advance in treatment where radiotherapy is desired, but total body radiation might be considered to carry extra toxicities, and there might be an advantage here for better targeted treatment.